Okay, my name is uh, Omar Boom. I am a sociocultural anthropologist. I work on the question of minorities in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, both ethnic and religious minorities. And I am associated with the University of California in Los Angeles. It goes back uh, to when I started my PhD. So I wanted to work on the question of water and water management in southern Morocco, in southern rural Morocco where I grew up. And, uh, and the question that I wanted to look at basically is how do people manage water in arid lands and in areas where they most of their economic activities is based on subsistence farming and subsistence agriculture. And uh, over time, I thought probably most of these questions that I want to work on have, are questions that are already discussed by scholars who worked on the question of war management in areas like Iran and like Yazd, where one of my former advisors wanted to do his work, or he did his work for a while. So I started looking at manuscripts and Islamic manuscripts, and that's where I was basically faced with the, uh, how Jews are mentioned a lot in these manuscripts especially when it comes to the question of water. So, and that led me to start thinking about this question of what does it mean to be a Jew living in a Muslim rural context where the main, the main economic activity is farming. And so how basically Jews managed to live in these communities, rural communities, and how they interacted with their of the local population. So that's a historical question that I wanted to look at as far as Jews living in Saharan regions. Anthropologically speaking, because that's my, but my trade, I, wanted, I had to figure out a way how to look at it. And, and so that's where the ethnographic part or the where interviewing people, I did not focus on Jews. I focused mostly on Muslims because there were it's an area that used to have a lot of Jews, but by 1960, they've already went to um, Israel and other parts of Europe. Mostly in, in uh, mostly they migrated to Israel. So, so, so that's for me, uh, shifting from interviewing Jews to shifting to interviewing Muslims was, I think, a very interesting way of looking at the question. And then from that local context, I went, I started thinking about broader questions like what does it mean to be Jew in the context of post-independence Moroccan state? What also does it mean to be Jew in the context of many Middle Eastern nation states? And what does it mean to be an, uh, another minority in the general Middle East? So I started with this small group to other minority groups, both ethnic and religious. It, it, it taught me a lot about myself. I think as a, as a Moroccan Muslim, uh, I personally, um, the research part led me to think more about what does it mean to be human and, uh, and how the manuscripts also tell us more complex stories about how Jews and Muslims interacted even in in context where people are challenging each other over specific lands over specific properties so so that for me was a was a big learning moment and and from there i trying to listen listening to stories also of young adults who've never met jews and how they get transformed by talking about these questions today in the, in the moroccan uh, context also talking to people who have lived with Jews. So as we are in the moment talking about a very political question that's going on in the Middle East, when you put it in the context of other historical issues and how people actually relate to personal stories, that so it, it makes the story a much, much more complex. And then, and then you think about it as a learning educational experience and how you as a teacher also, how to use these experiences to be moments where of, of teaching to other kids and new generations of how to deal with 
question of violence, question of hate, question of anti-Semitism, question of Islamophobia, and so on and so forth. So that's a personalizing the story for me. Why? Because I think it's the generational, the generational uh, story for me is important because you can apply it to any groups, especially at this moment now where we're talking about questions of refugees. So what does it mean to, for somebody from Mali who is facing drought to migrate to Morocco? And then from Morocco coming to Germany or France, so 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 listening to these stories of people who migrate for different reasons or who move around the world for different reasons, uh, whether they are forced or they're because of their own choice, I think it's it's very important to think about these stories. And as you think about these stories, I think we definitely try to find ways of how we can from a policy perspective in the future, deal with some of these uh, major issues that face the world today. Doing interviews with Jews, uh, and this is the second phase of some of the projects that I'm working on right now, doing interviews with Jews all over the world, Moroccan Jews all over the world, it just, it's a, a t another teachable moment for me, very personal moment for me, to see how there is no difference between me and another and a Moroccan Jew or the descendant of a Moroccan Jew because when I go to the synagogues, I hear the way they pray, I hear the sounds are very similar to the way when I go and pray in a mosque. The, the, the same the rhythm, the same, the, the language might, the, 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 the words might be different from Hebrew to Arabic, but the sounds are there. When I go to and I attend Shabbat uh, dinners sometimes where I, I, I taste the same Moroccan spices, the same food, the same names, and it doesn't, whether you are in Montreal or Los Angeles or somewhere in Casablanca, it's not, it doesn't change. So, so, so those and the music, the music, the sound of, so all these things, I think when you think about it and you put it together, personally, it, that's one of the things that I learned from, from the research outside of the books that I'm writing or the articles that I'm publishing. These are moments that make, my, make me personally a much more, uh, in my understanding of the world, uh, more humane. <laughs> and also, I try also to relate that to in the classroom, but also I try to hopefully live a life through that to be an example just like other people, hopefully, to make this world a better place.